Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jason Avant, and this is the Q&A podcast on Inside the Birds platform. We're excited to be back again another week. We've seen more action from our birds. Some of us like it. Some of us do not like it. And my man Q is right there on the other side. Q, say what's up to the people. What's up, everybody? Glad to be back. Got a lot to talk about. We I don't know if it's all. It's not going to be good. <laughs> it's not going to be all good. But I'm glad to be back and excited to talk about it. So. This is one of those games, <laughs> those preseason games. Now I I understand it's a preseason game. I understand that Lane Johnson didn't play. Jason Kelsey didn't play. Brandon Brooks didn't play. Blah 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 blah. blah. D line didn't play. On and on and on and on and on. But at some point, you need some depth. <laughs> At some point, you need the third strings to come in and win a game. Anybody ever heard of Nick Foles in this city? I don't know. He, he wasn't starting the day one. and backup, right? So he came in and helped us win the Super Bowl. So eventually, we're going to need those guys. Who was the backup for um, doggone Jason Peters? Who was the backup when Darren Sproles went out? Like, you need these guys. So don't get caught up in just thinking, hey, this is a preseason game. No, these guys have to perform. Oh, All right, yeah. I'm off my <laughs> – hey, I'm going to be back, and I'm nice again. Here we go. We want to thank you, um, all the fans that are tuning in to support this show. And um, we just want to say thank you for making it a success. Um, thank you for Jeff and Adam and Hunter and everyone that's responsible behind the scenes for the Q&A podcast. We're excited to be back again another week. And to all the fans, can keep hitting us up. Um, inside the birds at gmail.com is where you can submit your questions. Again, inside the birds at gmail.com. Make sure that you follow us, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and we are ready to start this episode off right. Last week, you made some noise all <laughs> over social media. Your thought process about Jonathan Gannon and what he has to show us. And this week, I think you have the same question. <laughs> the For same real, man. question. What's, What's wrong with the Eagles' run defense, Quint Michael? Can you tell me something? Is it a scheme problem? Um, the Patriots uh, was able to run it as much as they wanted to. The Steelers are able to run it as much as they wanted to. Is it the run scheme? Is it the personnel? Is it the defensive coordinator? Is it because he's trying to preserve his, his um, you know, plays for the season? Tell me something. Tell me something good so I don't jump off the bridge tonight. Come on. Shoot, I, I wish I knew the answer. It, it actually is a probably a huge mixture of, of all of that. Um, you know, I watching the game live, I was like, man, what is going on? Like it just and I did so I will give him this. I think he did do maybe one or two blitzes in early and a couple stunts, but it was like after that, it's like they totally went away from anything. Yeah. And cut so they were let's let's be honest, right? They were rookies and young players and guys that aren't starters, right? And yep. the Patriots, I mean, if you I go did. back and watch that tape, Trent Brown was absolutely destroying <laughs> everyone that lined up on him. You know yep. that 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 Patriots line is is very good, and you can tell that they are they're in midseason form already. Now that being said, that front um, there was no imagination in. Um, you know, the, the, the movements, the, the slants, it was like bull rush, bull rush, bull rush every play. And, um, you know, there, there was no engaging with their hands. There was no fight to get off the blocks. It just looked like they were going through the motions. It looked like the, the entire D line. I don't know if they were tired. I don't know what it was, but it seemed like every single play, it was the same move. It was just a bull rush run right down the middle of the guy and just get pancake. And yeah, you know, it, it's it's unfortunate because I, I I guess I do you know we were talking last week about you want to kind of hold your cards close to your chest but at some point you've got to practice game time situations right mm -hmm. you've got to give these guys some tools and so it really felt like you know if I'm if I'm a defensive coordinator um, you know yes I want to keep my stuff hidden I want to keep my stuff secret and I want to save some of my best stuff but also mm -hmm. I don't want my guys to go out there and lose confidence in me. I don't want my guys to go out there exactly. and lose, you know, faith in my defense. And and mm -hmm. I, I kind of felt that that maybe it's, beca it's becoming it, a case. It, it's becoming an issue of that, of like, man, 
I'm I'm getting my head beat in every play doing what coach is telling me. He's not giving me a, a chance or the tools to really, you know, go out there and do my thing. So I think it's a huge mixture of the the uh, the um, the Patriots offensive line being very dominant, yeah. you know, holding the cards close, and then you got young guys out there that don't really know how to react. And and well, I don't want to say they don't know how, but they probably haven't learned the different moves and the different um, interest, like in little small things yeah, about this game that make mm-hmm. a difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I don't know, man. What do you think? <sighs> There's so much, man. Like, so <laughs> as I'm watching the game and as I'm I'm paying attention, I'm looking at the D line. I'm like, okay, oh snap, this is gonna be a hard day. None of our D lines playing and their starters are out there, right? So you know that this is gonna be a tough day. But you don't expect guys to just give up and you don't expect them to just stay blocked. Yes. And my problem was is that um, if you're going to keep that four man rush versus five off, five better offensive linemen, why not bring the linebackers up a little bit? The linebackers, man, live that, you know, six, seven yards behind, you know, the, the, from the line of scrimmage. And it was just weird that they were continuing to stay in the same defense where yeah. nobody was pressing the line of scrimmage. Make the lineman think that you're a part of the count. Get a count wrong. It, it's, it was so simple and so vanilla that it's impossible for anybody to confuse the mic or a read or anything <laughs> like that. It was textbook. It was the defense that you draw up in Little League of what cover two is and what cover four is, right? Everybody's in the same spot every single time. It's like, oh, yeah, I understand this. And then yeah. you ask pros to go block that that's better than you already. It's a very, very hard recipe in order to get anything. So I felt bad for the backups because I felt like the coach would have to do something more in order to make it a fair fight. Usually when you have um, when you're outnumbered or you're out, um, there's better talent. You have to be better at scheme. You got to be better at a stunt. You got to be better at confusion. You have to do some sleight of hand. That's what happens, right? A team that's usually less talented, they do more sleight of hand. They do more wing tee. They do more spread offense. They do more wildcat. They do more trick plays. That's what happens. So um, I think he doesn't want to get into all that, and I understand it. But like you said, at some point, you got to have some confidence. And I don't necessarily know if these guys have confidence. Or maybe they're saying, okay, the preseason practices, the – you know, the, the the practices against the Patriots, the practices against squad the, practices. the Jets, the end of the squad. Yeah. These practices, joint practices, um, are proven to the guys in those practices that they can play with anybody because that's when they're doing all of their stuff. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's the point. But for right now, I'm not a believer in it. I'm yeah. I'm not saying that it can't be fixed or changed. The reason I'm not a too much of a believer in it is because I think that being in one defense the entire game is just not good practice for any football player. You need right. different looks. You need something new. Um, and, and 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 get this out. They were missing a boatload of tackles in the same defense, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And like it, like yeah. it's the same angles. It's the same tackling angles. It's the same thing. They were they were just. How do you let Cam Newton go eight for nine? Cam Newman never been eight for nine in his life. I mean, he looked like <laughs> exactly. Cam Newton has never been eight for nine. That's because he just was back there, just chilling, no pressure, yeah. no nothing. It just happened. So, um, I was a little then, frustrated with that, and and we we're going to get down the line and talk about it a little bit. And then, but, and, and I don't, I don't want to cut you off there too, but you made me think about something too, right? I'm, I've seen on social media and I, people I've seen around town talking, and you know they they said, well, you know they they did well in practice. They you know, they they basically had two games, you know, in practice during the week. And then so this game doesn't count. And I'm like, no, like it's, it's the opposite. Yeah. We're talking about practice. Like, yes, you can learn some things in practice. But when it's game time, you got to have that click. Something's got to click in you. Right. It's a, it goes up. It never comes down. It never goes in reverse. Right. Exactly. No matter how competitive the practices are. And I've had many of competitive joint practices, right, in my career. No matter how competitive the practices are, the game is always elevated. Yes. It's always it, – it, you always have to go up, and 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 you can't start saying, okay, yeah, the practices are more important than the game. No, it's never like that. Jalen Rager balls in practice. We want to see him ball at the game. 
right? right? We want to see a turnover because there's a lot of um, practice all Americans, a lot of practice pro bowlers. There's a lot of them all over this league. You look at them like Kevin White down in New Orleans in practice. I'm sure he running past everybody in a game. You drop four or five (laughs) balls. You can't play no more. It just happens. You know what I mean? Some people step up to the challenge. Some people don't. The only way you can know that is in the game. Yep. That's it. I know some (laughs) dudes that look terrible in practice. Terrible. (laughs) Cut him immediately. You turn them lights on. And a whole different person shows up. Yep. Yep. That's a real thing, man. I, I, I'd, is, rather, man. I'd rather have that dude. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, it. the dude out there. And he laughing at the dude that's going, that's <laughs> impressing people in shorts. Like, <laughs> like okay. Here we okay. Go. Do it on Sunday. <laughs> All right. Now, so he, listen, and we're going to transition to this right back. Listen to this. Listen to this. This, this, this is, this tells the whole story of the last two, two preseason games. Key stat, the Eagles had two more total plays at 46 than the Patriots had rushing attempts at 44 mm. last week. That, that, <laughs> a, that stat makes me angry beyond belief. <laughs> and, 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 and people are going to say, hey, those are the backups. No, you need depth in this league. How many times over the last five years has our team finished healthy? Never. Mm. It yeah. never happens. Ever, ever happens in the National Football League. Somebody's going to come from behind. Somebody's going to step up and take a starter spot that's been injured. A guy that you never heard of is going to show up. And and then there's teams that, that are going to say, okay, our injuries caused us to lose all the game. Like, it's something that you got to prepare for. So if your guys that are behind are this far from the starters, that's a problem. Yeah. They can't be this far. It can't be a, such a chasm that that you lose thirty five to nothing. <laughs> can't be that. Great. It can't it be can. that great of a chasm. It can't. Um, so, and the Eagles have fewer total plays forty one than the Steelers had rushing attempts in the first game forty two. That's two in a row. That's two in a row. Now yeah. we do understand the defense is vanilla. We do yeah. understand that we don't have everyone playing. But there has to be something that's better than what we are seeing. Um, let's transition to the next thing, Q. Um, are the Eagles linebackers more suited to make tackles outside the box than playing downhill? Because we've seen people run directly. And now this is all scheme to me. This has nothing to do um, from what we've seen so far. I don't think it has anything to do with. Um, coming downhill and making plays. It's hard when you have five offensive linemen, you got an extra tight end there, and you got four defensive linemen that are not starters, and you got linebackers out there who are going to be reached by guards and centers and anybody else that want to reach them. I think it's a very, very tough ax. Um, yeah. You know, so so that's my take, but you go ahead, Q. Yeah, you know, um, like first off, I want to say, I feel like Alex Singleton, you know, he's he's solidified his spot. He's been playing, you know, like his hair's on fire. He's been all over the field. And that's what you need, right? Mm-hmm. You want 11 of those type of guys on the field. TJ Edwards had another uh, stellar game. He had, a, you know, in my opinion, he had a really good game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that being said, it's I think it's still very early to tell whether or not they can or can't play downhill because, again, um, you know, when your defensive end is getting manhandled and – put into your lap every play. It's hard to to play downhill. And so I think I'll, I'll, re, I'll reserve my judgment until the first game because I, I still, I agree and I, 100% with you. We have not seen enough um, scheme-wise to be able to make that that um, that um, assessment. Yeah, we, that, it's, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, I, I still, and it's so frustrating. I, I feel like this team, this defense can be good. But I just, it's, I still don't know. Like, we don't, we don't know what they want to do. We don't have what their plan is going to be. So it's hard for me to, to really say one way or the other right now because I don't have any idea on the scheme. Um, when you're lining up again and you're just four man rush, um, getting up the field or getting hammered inside. On third it's, down, it's, too. Oh, oh my God. On, on third, third down. <laughs> it's like, dude, you playing cover four and cover two on third down and you expecting them to get off the field? Never. It never, yeah. it's never going to happen. Like, 
I kind of feel like if that was a, I don't know, I would never do this, but it's one of them situations where the the defense, they get the call and they look to the side and be like, man, we ain't playing that again, man. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't getting our head kicked in. We playing this. Like man, we exactly. out here. We exactly. out here, not you. Let's we, we let's go out there right here. So obviously, they're I don't I'm not condoning them, you know, calling their own their own plays. But that's a situation where as a as a defender, you're frustrated as hell. You're tired as hell. You're calling the same defense over and over again. You're not giving me the tools to work with to make a play. Yet yeah, you're asking me to make a play. That's just difficult. So yeah, you know, I'm gonna withhold my judgment for right for that right now. I think that eventually, if if we start doing more scheme stuff, I think they'll be all right. I. I I don't want to, again, make that judgment or assessment right away just because the defense is so vanilla and what they're being asked to do is so unreasonable yeah. um, because you can, they, like I said, they are getting linemen to the second level every single play. Yeah. Um, and that's hard for any, any team, any linebacker, right? You just can't. Um, I remember – when Sarah Goosa retired and Ray Lewis had to figure it out before Haloti Nada got there. And mm -hmm. Ray Lewis was getting reached so much that he just was, he was just so mad and frustrated because he didn't realize like, man, Sarah Goosa is taking up two the entire time. Oh, yeah. And then that year without him, those two years without him, you know, his numbers declined. He was frustrated. All of his mic'd up stuff was like, man, this can't be happening. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? That was all of his stuff. And so, so what I'm saying is, is that the best of the best is are going to struggle downhill if they're constantly having linemen um, touch them four to, four yards down the field. Oh, yeah. It's just hard. It's hard to do. Now, for me to get to get to that question, linebackers in space or downhill, the downhill portion, I don't know. We know Alex Smith, play, um, Alex Singleton plays better in space than. Um, possibly downhill, just from his frame and his figure, um, just his shape. He, you know, he's not a big muscle bound, you know, being able to shed guards and, and take on fullbacks. It's just not his build. Do we know that if he can do it? Because some guys surprise you, so you got to give him an opportunity and a chance. Mm -hmm. But I think that he's better sideline to sideline. Um, TJ Edwards doesn't run fast, so those are things that make you tend to think, okay, if it's, if it's in front of him, he's going to do better than running sideline to sideline. Yeah. They were missing a boatload of tackles though. Both of them, even though yeah. single Singleton um, uh, had, you know, seven tackles, uh, they were missing a boatload of tackles in the flats, right. And yeah. on normal things. So um, I'm scared for the, for the Eagles linebackers, actually. I, you know, yeah. I, I am, I, I, and, I, I would be, I would be, you know, lying if I, if, if I would not, I, I don't think that, we have um, adequate winning talent there. I just don't yeah. consistently as a group. I don't think that we have winning talent there. Yes. Un unless we okay. can scheme it up to keep unless them guys. See, now that's where it all comes into play, all right? Like is, Exactly. Right now, man-to-man -man scheme and athletes have to win. Yeah. It's proven to us that, and, and, and this is, when you play a vanilla defense, it, it 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 just emphasizes that okay, the better player is going to dominate this drill. Yeah. Therefore, the better offensive lineman that the Patriots had dominated that drill. Yes. When you make it vanilla, the better athlete, the better player is going to shine. When you put scheme in there, now you can kind of level the playing field. So I think that if we're just going to ask these guys to line up and play football, we have no shot. <laughs> so that, therefore, scanning scheme has to be different. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then, you know, the other part, too, um, about whether – in today's game, I would say maybe against the Titans, you definitely need a, a downhill type of linebacker. But today's game has changed maybe, so much. Maybe the 49ers sometimes. Yeah, yeah that's true. Into, yeah, yeah. The Niners. But very few teams are – you're going to need like a, a down – it's actually quite the opposite, I feel like. In today's game, you need more speedy guys, guys that can run and guys true. that can cover if need be. So, you know, the the days of of, of my my favorite days, my uh, – the, yeah. the, the, the three, three, yards. The three, three <laughs> yards in the cloud of dust, the, the – the, the big old run stoppers, the trotters and all that stuff, those days are gone. So yeah. I don't think we necessarily need a, a, 
a downhill a, da- a downhill guy yeah so yeah, yeah, he's guy. yeah he's going to be a situational player when you need him when you need him but yeah. i tell you this though q it's always better to have him and not need him than not <laughs> have him at all <laughs> let's tell you that because oh, yeah. Derek henry you need him Oh my you, God! Yeah, you, need, you need about three of them. Yeah, cause, cause, yeah, you can't have somebody out there two twenty trying to tackle that dude. Yeah, you might as well cancel the Christmas right there. He's taking it all. He took all the presents, oh, took yeah. all the smiles and all the joy. He's gone. <laughs> really? All right, let's transition to the next thing. Um, is playing backups versus starters an excuse to be steamrolled that badly? Like, is that an excuse? <laughs> Because you know, that pretty was pretty pure domination. <laughs> that that was as an adequate, uh, no, that was a thorough, like, just ass whooping. That was just like, we better than you. Um, you don't belong in the same stadium, you know, that we belong in. Um, your practice days, you thought it was important. We prepare for this. Like, yeah. that was like a big brother, little brother. Oh yeah, you've been was- jumping off, popping off at the mouth, and I'm and I'm gonna show you that 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 you're inferior to me. That's what that was. That was a message sent, 100, percent 100, percent and you know, um, it's it was weird seeing because I guess you get so used to Tom Brady when he was there, and then they had the one year last year with Cam, and it was kind of mm-hmm. like a down year. Um, so it was, to me, it was a little weird seeing that type of football from the Patriots. I mean. It, it looked like old school smash mouth. Like we're just gonna run you over, and you can't you can't stop us. Like that's yeah. what that's what it felt like. They just came in and just road graded our entire defense, and we couldn't stop them. So to me, it was weird seeing that, and I I think um, that was a message <laughs> sent not only to the Eagles but to everyone else. And yeah, the so that that's one of those things that our de- but the, our defensive line didn't play now. There was a bunch of guys on the back end that did play. Eric mm-hmm. Wilson played. Alex Singleton played. Vontae Maddox played. Anthony Harris played. There's a lot of guys that played. I will say that our strength has always been in the defensive line. Yeah. Um, and, and it goes to show that football doesn't matter without the people that are, that are up front. You can have <laughs> You can have whoever back there. If you can't control the line of scrimmage, it's just a long day. And that's my hope for the Eagles this season, is that our offensive line can actually dominate and our defensive line can dominate. It always gives you a chance, even when your skill positions are not as – that are are not on the same level as as those players. You still have an opportunity to win. So – yeah, but but I don't necessarily know if it's an an excuse because you need need that. And it's just showing us that our – Top talent and our second level talent. Our top talent make, you know, win games, Pro Bowl level at times. Our second level talent, we're questioning if they belong in the NFL. And mm. and that and that right there can't be. Oh, yeah. Right. So right and no and, and that's and that but when you get dominated that bad, you start to say, okay, either they're young, and if they're young, they get an opportunity. If they're older and they're getting play and they're playing like this, we got a question like, what's going on? Like, where are we? Yeah. Um. So that's another thing. Let's let's go let's go to the next subject. There, um, there seemed to be slightly more variety in John Gannon's scheme um, when Jannar Avery was on the field on the ball at Sam. Um. Also, more twisting and stuff like that. So, do you think that it was because of the talent of Jannar Avery? Or do you think it was because they were literally trying to make him look better in order to shop him? <laughs> like <laughs> took, took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> like what, what? What do you? What do you think? Yeah. Like because that's what like because there were reports earlier this week saying like there was two teams that contacted the Eagles about Jannard Avery, and and it just so happened that the only person that could move around and do something in, in, on defense, um, you know, magically gets more you know interest mm-hmm. from other teams. So what do you think? That's the that's the very first thing that I thought of, <laughs> and, and and you know we we've we've seen this happen before. You know you yeah. try to showcase a guy to say, oh, he can do this, he can do that, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then try to put him in positions to to get higher value for him because you're making them look good, right? And yeah. so, um, 
you know, ju- ju- and just judging from, you know, Gannon's track record with keeping everything close to the vest. And then all of a sudden it's coming out of nowhere with the stunts and the movements and, and moving him around. I just, to me, it feels like that was just for the purpose of making him look, making Make Avery look, look good. good. So try to and get for, something. <laughs> and for the fans out there, you guys just like, there are so many games that are going on at the same time in the National Football League. Oh my like, God, yeah. You're not – like, when you're watching the football game, there's games that are going on between the, the, the scouts. There's game that's going on with general managers. There's game that's going on with the statisticians. Um, there's games that are going on with people that are looking at signs and other people that are trying to um, figure out and decode what, what signals and things mean. There's so many different games that are going on. Um, and personnel games is one of those games as well. So um, whether you start a player, whether you sit him, all of those things are um, strategic. Um, how can we get value for a guy? How can we keep a guy from a bonus? How can we, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, you know, get this guy to the Pro Bowl? How can we? All of those things are kind of pre-planned to some extent. Now, I'm not saying that the game is fixed. What I'm saying is, is that there's an invested interest sometimes for guys to do certain things. You wonder why this guy makes all the plays because up he's in the position where he's going to be free most of the game. <laughs> he's at the joker position where the defensive scheme is allowing him to be free so he can make that play. Or um, how is this guy getting open so much? Oh, he's the only guy in motion this entire game. Mm-hmm. And they're sending him, to, sending him on crossing routes and there's like three other people that are running in the opposite direction and gets man coverage. Like, <laughs> they, like there's so many ways to get to, to, to manufacture offense and defense. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and it's always for a purpose, always for um, always an in in intent behind it in the National Football League. It just does not happen. It doesn't happen to happen. Um, very, very, you know, rarely does it happen. Now, there are times where guys just have great games and it wasn't intended. But um, there's a lot of positioning and jockeying for um, for, for position and, and, and leverage in free agency. Yep. Yeah. So um, now, Q, th- th- this part is um, – why did they go at my man Zach McPherson like that? <laughs> Tell me something, cute. What you know, this is why I love Belichick. Like, I don't I think that Tom Brady's the reason, but I do respect Belichick for this for this. And I respect Todd Haley. Um, who else yeah. does this? Mike McCarthy does this, Aaron Rodgers, of course, because it's with the same coach. There's a few offensive coordinators and 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 teams that when they see blood in the water, they exploit <laughs> it, and that and, and that's how the game should be. All too often, the Eagles, for some reason, no matter what coach we have, don't exploit weaknesses. Like there can be a dude that comes off the bench with number forty-seven on, and he has <laughs> tennis shoes. His shorts are, you know, his 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 pants are too long. He don't have gloves on, no spat, no nothing. He has a quarterback he jersey on, and he's playing quarterback, a <laughs> cornerback. And we don't go at him for half the game. We throw it over there, for, you know, every sparingly, every every now and again. And for the life of me, I don't understand why we don't adopt this mentality. If the, the backup in, if if the backup is in, let's attack him and prove that he belongs out there. Oh yeah. Let's let's <laughs> let's do that. Let's do it until in, until they change it, and then we attack the other person that comes in until he proves that okay, we can't attack him the same way. That's how football should be. You find a weak link, you you keep exploiting it until the team so changes. It. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I mean, I don't know why we why we never do that. And I agree with you hundred percent. It's that's one of them situations. Because I've been that guy before, where you come in the game <laughs> unexpectedly, you're like, oh man, just. <laughs> Just don't even look my way, man. No, don't, don't. No. <laughs> Next play. Next my luck, play. My luck. Quarterback comes up. He's like, hey, check 999. <laughs> right to him. I don't care if he knows. I don't care if he knows. Just run a go. Like, that's that's how I should be. But no, um, Zach, man, you know, so watching, rewatching um, the game, some of those plays, um, especially one in particular, was a crossing route. It was supposed to be zone. It looked like a blown coverage. It yeah. looked like um, our entire back seven just bit on the run and mm-hmm. then tried to get out of there, but the damage was done. 
Um, it was on the crossing route, and um, I think it ended up. I think it ended up being a touchdown. Mm-hmm. But he got Zach got a crossing route, and I think he was supposed to. It was his own. He was expecting someone to take his guy, and no one was there, and, and so, so it, it made it hustle. look like yeah, he had to yeah. hustle. And sometimes that happens at corner or safety position. Somebody blows coverage, and you end up looking like the guy that uh, got burnt. But yeah, that 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 play right there um, was wasn't his fault, but. A lot of the other stuff was 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 on him, and yeah. um, I. This is the situation. So when you have a young corner like that, and they struggle and they have a bad game, this is where the mental game. This is where the mental part of it becomes um, very very important. This is where guys are either they're going to make it in the league or they're not. This is a situation where Zach immediately the next day needs to go in the film room get with his coaches, get with Slay, get with everyone and make sure everyone that has any um, knowledge of the game or what he can do to get better and get with them and just work and work and work and work. And yeah. you, we see it all the time, guys that don't do that, guys that wallow, guys that go into the, into the tank, they're the ones that never get better. They never rise above it. So I, do, I think that he'll be okay if he does those things. I well, think he'll be okay if he Slay. takes it as a learning lesson and tries to get better with it. Yeah, Slay, Slay will definitely do everything he can to try to help him. So that's that's good that you have veteran leadership um, yes. on that side of the ball. Um, it's never good when a cornerback has, you know, eight, nine tackles. It ain't never good. People <laughs> no. like, man, the corner was tackling. <laughs> no, <laughs> the corner was getting it caught on him. <laughs> that's why he got all them tackles. He wasn't really? just coming up. There's no Antoine Winfield, no Charles Woodson's out there. Like, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't mean it's just not happening. Yeah. But, you know, well, I mean, how much are we really expecting right now? I mean, this is the second game. Yeah. Again, we already said there's no there's no pass rush. And you know, there's, no man. there's no man. You know, so, so it, yeah. it's, so it's, what you it's tough. This whole thing, it's just tough yeah. to, to really. They're at a disadvantage. Yeah. I, I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. So, yes, I'm not coming at the kid because it's. It oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I don't think you, know you were. I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah. not coming at the kid because because you know these things happen. Um, like I said, it's vanilla, and and it teaches you that, especially for a young player that hasn't learned you know route concepts or um, you know different techniques in his in his footwork and and things of that nature. It's going to be even harder for him when you have superior players. That's the only way that you know, these vanilla systems would even look good in that. Like, because I know Asante would have had a couple of picks yesterday, yeah. you know, or, or not yesterday, you know, when the game was, you know. So, it, it, because that's his thing, looking at the quarterback, oh, you put me in this defense, I'm looking at the quarterback all day, I'm going to get one, you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> only at dude, least, the at only least. dude I know that want to argue when you go, man. <laughs> that that's my boy, funny, though. Yeah. yeah, he was good at that. Man. He just, he just. He's he just couldn't get in the pits. Yeah, he want them. He want that money. Give me that money. <laughs> yes. Um. Let's let's change this to the different to to the other side of the ball. Q. Okay. Topic two. Other side of the ball. Were you surprised about Jalen Hurts not playing? Like warm ups. Boom. I. You know what? First thing that came to my mind was like, man, did we just trade for Deshaun Watson? <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing. I was like. Mm, that don't look like COVID. He ain't, he ain't <laughs> coughing. He ain't coughing too much. <laughs> For real. You know I mean? So I'm like, uh, I'm like, um, so is is Deshaun Watt maybe the deal was close? I don't know. What do you think? What I, I thought the same. That's the first. And the, I, my friend, my <laughs> friend, we, we, I was watching the game, you know, and and uh, my friend texted me, and I'm like, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Oh, sh- we about to trade. We about so, to trade. Because, you know, like, so what people may not know, like a lot of times when something like that happens where a guy's supposed to um, play a game or, or um, you know, hit the field, especially that late, um, and not saying that it was fake, but that's what was my first initial reaction was like, okay, they're holding him back because they don't want him to go onto the field and get possibly injured because they might be working on a trade or something. So that was my first initial thought. And then come to find out that he actually – Ended up going to the hospital. Then I kind of feel bad and all that stuff. But I, I don't. 
I thought that whole that whole situation was was very weird. I mean, was he was weird. dancing before the game, right? He was he was on yeah, the field, having good pads time. on, having a good time, um, and just all of a sudden, bam! Yeah, but wow. nothing else, nothing came of it, right? He's in practice today. They're up in New York. You just, I mean, it's possible the deal could have fell through or something. I don't know. But. Yeah, it was like it was close. It was close. <laughs> it was close. Uh, no cigar. Yeah. But how do you, guy. as a player, if 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 it, if he really wasn't sick, what right. does? And that's why I think that when when I look back when I look back at it from this perspective now, I'm like he had to be sick. Yeah. And I know he's a very uh, positive and team guy, but I think even that would get to him where you're going to literally take me out of the take me off the field fake that i'm going to the hospital so (laughs) because you potentially had a trade for another person and then i'm going to come back to a press conference and not say (laughs) something about it i don't i I don't know i'm way too petty for that right so (laughs) you can't like and i and i think and i think i'm a team guy but even i would be petty over that so like i I, like so i so i think that he had to be sick yeah he he had to be yeah yeah because we would hurt we'd hurt something yeah. Uh, you know, was disgruntled about the way they're treating Jalen Hurts, or you know, it'd have been something. You know me, man. I'm I'm all about conspiracy theories, oh, and I'm and I, I didn't have like eight eight hundred, five hundred, <laughs> six hundred different <laughs> theories popped in my head about what happened. And What's going on? None of them involved. Just tell me what actually involve aliens. Just, just tell me don't involve aliens. <laughs> right. Aliens came down. You know, they said, "Listen, <laughs> we about to trade. We about to trade." No, nah, I'm just kidding. Man. No. <laughs> oh man, yeah, man. No, I had that, somebody that tell me with a straight face. It's like, there, man. Listen, man. I know what they're aliens, man. I saw them. The, I was like, are you see? Like, listen, like. With a straight face, you know, because you saw him, man, stop it. What kind of weed you smoking, man? <laughs> they got the bad stuff in it somewhere. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, they, let me stop. Let, let me get off of this before, before, before we get some people calling in. Man, I saw him the other day, too. You guys are <laughs> bullying us. <laughs> oh, man. All, All right. right. So let's go to the next topic. All right. Next topic. Next topic. Um, all right, so <clears throat> we didn't see Lane, we didn't see Kelsey, we didn't see Brandon Brooks. However, we got a chance to see Jordan Malata, who's a starter. I used to say Amalu, who's a starter. Did that make sense to you? And why? Age, injury history, some things that come to my mind. <laughs> Reps, Isaac, that doesn't make sense. Maybe Jordan. But tell me your thought process when it comes to that. Yeah, I I'm okay with it. I'm okay with, with um Lane, Kelsey, and, and Brandon. Um absolutely. If, if one of those goes down, it's it's a wrap. So mm-hmm. I'm okay with those guys sitting. I do think having Isaac out there was a little weird being as um he's he's you know he's earned a right spot right. and mm-hmm. he's a vet and all that. Um, my only guess is numbers. Uh, numbers, number one, number two. Um, you know, you're you're on the left side. You're next to Jordan, who's a rookie. Not well, not a rookie, but he's a, 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 still a young player. Yeah. Um, you still got Flacco. You know, you, you yeah. Give him a little bit of help on his blind side. So yeah. I'm Great I'm point. being devil's advocate there when it comes to that situation, and maybe maybe that's why. Um, you know, Isaac basically had to – he got the short end of the stick on that yeah, one. He's like, man, why did I have to be on the left side this time? Dang. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have been cutting up, though. <laughs> yeah. the yeah, yeah and, and that's it. So getting that work with the guy that's going to be next to you most of the year um, and Jordan being a younger player, I can see why Jordan plays more snaps because he – only going to get better with more snaps. Yeah. Um, he's shown himself to be, you know, um, pretty good with it, and um, he's he's ascending. So you don't want to knock off that steam and make him feel like he's arrived when there is, um, you know, uh, you know, guys there that are still competing. Yeah. And, and and if Jordan goes, Isaac has to go. So I I get I get that and I understand. And also, 
um, just for sheer numbers, right? You got, you know, Nate Herbig that's playing center that also plays guard. Mm -hmm. It's not many guards and, you know, um, guys you have out there prior didn't play well, Herbig didn't play well. Yeah. Um, not many guys playing well. So if to give them guys a quarter or something before before they got out, Isaac was probably, you know, the only option, I think. Yeah. yeah. So that's my thought process when it when when it comes to that. I, I don't think that it was like they should have been on the sideline too. Like you said, it's the left side. One guy plays, the other guy has to play for 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 chemistry yeah. and then just sheer numbers. Um remember it's not many players in the National Football League. You you only got you know, three deep, three deep, four deep, maybe at that position, and yeah. and not even. It's usually going to be like three deep because you got you got both sides. Yeah. So um, you need to you needed to get through the game, and I thought they did their 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 job with getting through the game. Coaches are saying joint practice are, practices are basically the same as games. Do you believe that or what? Are you buying that? No. Maybe I think the, it, maybe I, I, I love the competitiveness of, of 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 it, but I don't necessarily know. But you go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm saying like maybe to the coaches in their mind, it's just yeah. like a it's just like a game, but it's not. It's it's different when you're actually in those situations when you're on the field in the game and when you're on the field in practice. Mm -hmm. You can you can mess up in practice and you know maybe you, you get some bad tape and the coach is gonna go off on you. Maybe you get beaten one on ones and the fans, you know, they're yelling at you. When you get beat in a game. It's on ESPN. Like even even preseason, it's on ESPN. So like yep. it's they call no. your name out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it ain't no hiding. It's not no hiding in the game. So to me personally, it's not the same. Um, you always want. You don't even as a coach. I can't even believe you would mention those two in the same sense. Because game is uh, it should be up here and it should be the pinnacle of the competition. It should not be equal to a practice. You yeah. should, like you said earlier, you need to rise up to the game time situations. You cannot have the mindset of treating it the same because what's going to happen when you get when you get into the game situation, you're going to feel, oh, it's just like practice. Well, yeah. If it's just like practice, then it's just like the game. So I, I disagree with that. It's it, it's yeah. So I disagree with it too, just because of the adrenaline factor, right? Mm -hmm. So there's rarely, you know, it is rare when there's a bunch of adrenaline pumping for practice. Yeah. I don't care who's out there. It's only so much. You you may be fired up for and competitive and all of that stuff, but the game time adrenaline of the fans going and your mama watching and the butterflies because you know, you know, you got somebody that's formidable on the other side and you got yeah. the plays and it just drives that adrenaline all the way up where you're able to do things that you just normally wouldn't be able to do during practice. Yeah. Matter of fact, as I got in my 30s when I was playing, I didn't want to practice until Friday just because <laughs> my body hurt from the past game. But when you got when I got closer to the game and even if I was hurt, Going into the game, the adrenaline from from being, you know, preparing to get ready for the game would would you know make me rise above the what I was feeling. I was able to do like almost supernatural things because of that, and that's the game because you're so focused on it, and it's it's hollowed. It's a different place, right? It's it's something that should be, um, you know observe differently than practice so yes i agree with you um i believe that there's competitive moments and there is more energy and things of that nature but the the game is just not energy it's that it's that adrenaline it's that that this is the real thing this counts in the win and loss system this is yeah. on tape this is my audition this yeah. is the moment in time where i've been putting all the practices in so i can perform better on this day right so uh, like that's the only way that you can view it. Any in any other way, it's 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 not right. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't. I mean, you never want to devalue. Yeah, you never want to devalue that. You know, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts has not even a quarter of football played <laughs> for. <laughs> for the preseason 2021. Do you risk playing him in the finale against the Jets? 
He's going into 2021 with a series <laughs> uh, or two. At this, I mean, what's the point now? <laughs> I mean, I hate what, 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 just, 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 he, he's practice is simulated. This is the game. So he's doing good in practice. <laughs> That's not enough, man. Like, I, uh, so that's that's what you're telling me, though. You're saying like, what's the purpose? What's the point? Like, yeah. Okay, the purpose and the point for me is that we haven't. Well, I I won't say that his series in Pittsburgh um, against Pittsburgh, they went down the field and got points. That's it. He he looked pretty good. <laughs> that's all he had to show. He was three for seven. Four for seven. No. Was it three for seven? It was three for seven. 56 yards. Was it three for seven? No. Was yeah, it? I want to say it was three for seven. 56 yards. Okay. Now, All right. the if that's impressed, that's the that's what you want to be his stat line for, for 2021 preseason, and you think he's ready, then so be it. You've seen him every day. You know him better than we know him. I don't think that it's enough football in order for any starter to play a, a season, mm -hmm. um, especially in the second year. If it's Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, don't play him at all. Mm -hmm. But an unproven <laughs> guy with not many reps that's shown that he can be confused at times by opposing defenses, not my cup of tea, mm -mm. but what do you think? You think it's it don't matter? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> to me at this point, I I, I get what you're saying 100. Mm -hmm. percent But at this point, well, I mean, what good what good's gonna come of it? I mean, you get them in the game, you get them in a jazz game against people you practice with all week. Mm -hmm. You're probably not gonna play your starting line. You're yeah. probably only going to play your starting receivers for a couple series. Your yes. defense, you already said you're not going to you're not going to do anything that's really going to affect the game. So to me, the, judging from the, the past two preseason games, there's nothing that this coaching staff has done to, in my eyes, that values the preseason to the point of warranting putting him in there. Like at this point, you might as well just keep him out. Like there's. You already you already showed your hand. You already showed that you don't think it's it's important. You already showed that you don't think it matters. Why would you put to me? Actually, if you put Hertz out there right now, to me that's actually that's almost even worse. Yeah. Because you're now you're saying okay, we're just throwing him to the wolves right now. Like he has no yeah. bite blocking for him. He has nobody to throw to. He has no running back to hand the ball off to. And he's well, supposed to be a starting quarterback. It's interesting to see how NF the NFL is going to do this. I think they're going to do what you say. Most teams around the NFL where the starters are going to rest for this game. That's what I think is going to occur. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if because of that lack of, you know, the fourth game or the the them eliminating, NFL eliminating the fourth game, will some teams this first year – put some starters out there for a quarter or what have you. I'm curious to see if that happens. I doubt if it happens, um, but I want to know. And that's why it was so important for Jalen to play this past game. Yeah. But we'll see. We hope that we hope that it it translates to wins. I don't necessarily know how that that that's going to happen. But well, now, we'll get off that top. Go ahead. Go ahead, well, go ahead. Yeah, so – but – now it's funny because remember we the first game we were saying we wish that he had played he a little play. if he if he had played a, a, a entire first half that first game then we would be in a completely different well you never know but comes out healthy right plays the first comes half play it's well, a completely different well, situation every everybody in the city's on board boom done right yeah. so maybe moving on moving forward this is this will be the formula maybe that's what everyone's trying to figure out right now right yeah, now maybe, I don't like it that's at all. it yeah. Maybe that's it. All right, Devontae Smith, though. Let's transition to Devontae Smith. Okay. Devontae Smith has a few good catches, has some drops, um, struggled to, to connect. What do you think of 
his play? Do you think he's going to be able to get separation? <clears throat> what did it look like to you? To me, I'm going to just put it like this. <laughs> Yeah, this is sounds like it's gonna be good. <laughs> I, after I saw him when he ran that whip route, yeah, and press, and yeah. w- ended up being open by like six yards. I'm like, that's it. That's all I need to see. They could have just that was it. So, to me, to in my mind, I that's I thought that now that's, he, a, that's he was, a really hard route you guys to get open on. Yeah, it's a really really hard. Now in that situation when I'm rolling to you, it's a little bit easier, but it's still a very hard route to get open. Now go ahead, sorry about that. Keith. Yeah. Yeah, so the whip route. So, um, you know, when I saw that, I said, "Yeah, that, that, that's it." I mean, the guy, the guy is amazing. So, he struggled early, um, mm-hmm. you know, and that that could be for multiple multiple reasons. Um, but just that play alone, right there, it just showed me that we got something right there. So, yeah, he's got to stay healthy. I get, I am starting to get a little worried about him getting banged up a little bit. Um, yeah, because he was out. Mm-hmm. He's already yeah, he was out already a couple times by now. And so I'm worried about that. But when he's healthy, man, <laughs> and the, the thing about him too that that I love and from what I've heard 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 about him around the building and um, you know, even listening to him in interviews is that he he cares about football, he works his butt off, and he's a fighter. Like he's mm-hmm. he's got dog in him. So those things right there are what you want in a receiver. And so I'm um, I think I think he's gonna be all right. Yeah. I I agree with you. Now when it came to his routes, he like ladies and gentlemen, you it, it's very, very hard day one preseason. I'm talking about ground zero day one to to be open on every route. I thought that he was in position to catch the ball. The one on third down, it was third and nine or ten. He caught it at third and five. He was nowhere near getting the ball and, and it, you know, or, or getting the first down. And it came out, you know, got wrapped up pretty aggressively. The ball came out. That's considered a drop. I don't worry about drops with him. I don't. I worry about being able to use his body and his speed in the same way um, that he was able to use it in college and still get open, right? Because he has, he has a weakness. His weakness is his size. And can NFL guys who are positioned better, not just physically stronger, because that's not true. You're at your strongest when you're in college, because those like when you're in college, I feel like I was way stronger in college than I was in the NFL. Um, (laughs) So but you learn how to play the game and you're in you're always in the best technique and the best position. Can you can he get open on guys that are superior technicians? And the whip route was a shining moment. The slant was a shining moment. Um, but but some of the some of the other stops and um, other routes, there's guys that are, that are that are getting into him. So he has to learn how to how to um, maneuver in this league. It's a lot different. It's not because you're there. You're so much faster. It's not because you know they're so much stronger. It's because they're better at technique. And learning how to win with that is going to be, um, it's going to be up and down for him for for a few games. But I still think that even today, I still think that he's our um, probably our most polished receiver. Yeah, I agree with that. Isn't that like that's crazy, like, right? And I trust his hands more than I trust everybody else's hands. Wow. <laughs> think about it. Just guy. think about that. <laughs> like, either he's fantastic or there's a famine. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, I'm hoping it's like he's just that fantastic, right? But we've yet to see the others besides Quiz with a few plays, splash plays consistently. Like, no Travis Fogum into the second half. No um, JJ Ortega Whiteside. No John Hightower. None of those guys till the second half. Two targets between Ortega Whiteside and you know, like Probably. what are we doing? Like I don't, I don't necessarily know. So Devonte Smith, I don't worry about. I kind of figure that he's going to figure it out eventually. Mm-hmm. The other guys, I'm worried about more. Yeah. Yeah, so I, mean, I like Devontae Smith and what he showed. 
Um, I like him. I like when guys drop the balls early. And because it gives you an opportunity. I don't like it, but it gives you an opportunity to see what they're made of. Right. Because they're when you drop a ball in the NFL, it's very, very hard to overcome because there is our our fans automatically are going to boo <laughs> yeah. just off the rip. The coach is yelling at you. Um, the teammates looking at you, the quarterback rolling his eyes like you dumbass, right? <laughs> So there are so many like there and and so for you to focus, we've seen how many times have we seen a guy drop a ball and he go and drop the next two or three? Oh, like yeah. that happens because it happens that quickly. But the guys that drop a pass and then makes plays, make play, and that I I never thought that To had the best hands in the world, but To did not remember when he dropped it. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> that joke yeah. had no memory. The mm -hmm. fans don't even remember because that's how that's how that's how dominant he was when it came to his mentality. He's like, I can do it no matter what. I don't care if I drop the last four balls. That doesn't matter. I'm gonna step up and catch the game winner. That's just how he was wired, and that's yeah. what type of player you want. And so for Devontae to catch his last few passes after missing a few, that shows me that he's mentally ready for being an NFL player. Oh yeah, yep, yeah. So that was that was a positive sign for me. Um, let's, let's see what we got. Yeah. The the receiver room: Travis Fogan, JJ Arthur, White Side, High Tower. We have four. We got Devontae, we got Jalen, <coughs> Quez, and we got G War. Those fours, those four are locks for the team. We need at least one more, maybe two. You got two guys that are drafted. You got a guy that showed up for four games last year. What do you make of this? Who's out? Who's in? Who do you want to see? Are we good at receiver? Do we have the like? What What do you think? I I I, I don't think we are. I don't think we're ready at receiver. Okay. Um, we do need a vet, veteran pre presence. Um. I don't think I think Fulgham's out. Oh, um, yeah, out, out. Yeah, I think like so. Like going home, not with the team anymore after this preseason. Mm -hmm. Either okay. that, or or possibly, you know, maybe they move him or something. Um, okay, I could see that maybe for a late round pick or something. But I think I think he's out. I think JJ JJ's out as well. Um, so who does that leave? That leaves uh, High Tower. High Tower. That's been hurt. And and he he's another one that is very he's on the bubble, and mm -hmm. I think the only thing saving him is his you know where he was drafted, and you know that doesn't even hold much weight with a new yeah. coaching staff. So I think all three of those guys, if they can find someone on that's available on on the waiver wire, I think it's, it's a possibility that they're going to just cut cut weight with those three guys. Yeah. So I, go ahead. So yeah. No. And, yeah, go ahead. You got it. Oh, so here's my here's my thing. You got those three guys. What don't I have is the question. Right. Mm. So okay. I got you. Okay, so I have Devontae Smith. Mm -hmm. I have Jalen Rager. I have Quiz. Mm -hmm. I have Hightower if I have all three of those because it's a similar player. And Ward. Too, and right? Ward. What I don't have is big and physical, being able to take on a safety in a run game, being able to cut off a backside defensive end when a play is going away, being able to chip a defensive end in order to get the pass playoff, the, the play action pass playoff. I don't have that, and I don't have anybody that can jump up and, and catch a ball in the red zone. And I don't have guys that will sacrifice their body on a third down in a critical situation, I trust that they can get there, make make the play with their hands. Now, that's the guy I'm looking for, and that's the guy that's going to make the team. Because if I get high tower, I already got you know four, uh, four, you know three of them, three of him. He's a better route runner than most of them, you know, than especially everybody but Devontae. Maybe he's better than Devontae at running routes because because high tower does have the the goods when it comes to running routes separation will be no problem for him catching it is another subject um 
so if that's if that's the case, I can see them saying, okay, Hightower has shown promise. We want to keep him. But then you don't have anybody for the run game. Devontae Smith can't go for the run game. Greg Ward is not the best at the run game. Jalen Jalen Rager is small. He's going to be the guy that's catching catching the bubble. Koi is going to be a guy that's catching the bubble. Like that, you have no you have no bruiser. But I mean, Fulgham's not, he's not a bruiser, is he? JJ not a bruiser. Or J, JJ is has the body of a bruiser, and both of them can block really well for their size. Okay, they're not. They're not animals. They're not Heinz Ward. They're not, you know, um, you know, David Boston trying to, you know, finish people. <laughs> like, no, they're not those guys with the mentality, but they're very good at blocking. Okay. JJ is way better than Travis, but Travis is just a mental adjustment because Travis can have four or five knockdowns in the game, and then the next game, you know, he's missing blocks. JJ doesn't miss blocks. It's just that they, they – they're technician type of blocks where, you know, it's not aggressive, but he never loses. Right. So okay. if that's the case, I'm breaking all of this down. If that's the case, you got to go JJ or Fogum. Okay. Because you that's mean, the only thing mean, that you don't have. You mean keeping? If, you, if, keep, if you're going to keep one of them. If, you're, if, 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 if it's three people on a chopping block and you're saying we have to get one out of these three based on what you have in front of them, you have to keep JJ or Fulcrum. And my choice would be JJ. Okay. That's fair. That I'd would be that would be, be okay my choice that. if I if I was looking at it from their perspective. If you give me two, I'm gonna say it's probably gonna be JJ and 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 um I don't know, man. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah. That's it's, it's tough. It's a tough situation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, most so of the I broke all that down. That's we, we don't even, and that's the thing too is, it, it's it's really tough for us to sit up here and talk about it because they haven't shown anything, no, nothing, nothing. Yeah, and so it's fr it's extremely frustrating, and we'll have a better idea. Obviously, you know, well, the cut days are coming up, but and we got and I we think, gotta think we got. Oh, go ahead, go. Ahead. You say you think. I'm sorry, I'm cutting. I'm cutting you off. No, no, no you're good. I'm just saying, like, I, just, I think we'll have maybe have a better idea after t after Thursday's game. After, after the Jets I mean, yeah. game, hopefully, but. hopefully they can get those guys in there and they can play a lot and they can perform and get some balls thrown at them and, and get some separation so we can be able to see final yeah. time. But as we stand, we need a Emmanuel Sanders. We need a. Um, a veteran guy that's out there somewhere that's, you know, playing in this, you know, last season, couple last seasons or, yeah. or, you know, whatever it is. We need somebody along those lines. Somebody. Um, it's not many veteran receivers yeah, anymore just because they're so young. Like, there's a lot of young players. There's not many, like, veteran guys like that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think who's who's even would even. Yeah, it's like it's it's very very hard to to to. Yeah. Figure that figure it out, but we need somebody that's been around the league, somebody that is um, a great leader and mm -hmm. that can get it done on the outside. Maybe he's not in his in his prime, but somebody that that you can throw. A dog going eight yard stop route on third down to on the left side, Jalen, like Jalen Rager, when the one that he got, you know, Flacco intercepted, like that's a one on one backside eight yard stop. When you're explosive as he is, you run that route as fast as you can. You stop, you throw that ball by, you throw the the, the DB by, and that's a catch. That's a yeah. one on one that you gotta win every time. Like everybody's yeah. saying, no, you can't do anything about the throw. No, like that's the receiver. The receiver has to win on that route one hundred percent of the time. So let me ask you this: What about okay? So now this this is this person is completely a different type of player than that. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking um, career wise and mm -hmm. experience wise, a guy like Ted Ginn coming out of like he's retired now, but like a guy that's of his stature is that what you're saying? Like a guy that's 
He's been in the league for a while. Savvy knows the yeah. game, knows how to practice, like knows how to study. Is that the type? Because that, that's the first thing that popped into mind is someone along those lines. Yeah, but you can't play through Ted. Ted, Ted is a really, really good player and special, especially in kick return and down the field throws. But you can't line up Ted and say, hey, run a comeback. Right. You can't line up Ted and say, hey, man, run a slant. Ted is a situational player. Run a deep cross, run a post, run a bubble, run a quick screen. You need somebody that can get open with the route tree. Like I said, like an Emmanuel Sanders or somebody like that. Um, that's is what he, you, that's what that's what you need. Um, where is he? He was in. Uh, he was in with the Saints last the year. The Saints, yeah. yeah. Is he still there? No, I'm I'm not sure where he is right now. To be honest with you, I will be upset um, about that. But we we need something. We need some something like something like him where he can catch slants, he can catch goals, he can catch it all. Um, and if he's retired, we need to be on this. We need to be uh, <laughs> calling him right now. Howie. <laughs> right, yeah. So that's what we need. Come on, come on out of the retirement, get this five million dollars in. Shut up. <laughs> I'll be all right with that. That's that's good. Yeah. Right. So that's 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 my thought process. We we're gonna wrap this. We're gonna wrap this up, Q. Um two questions. What are we learning about the offense schematically? What what are we learning? What are, what are we learning from the offense schematically? Are we learning any more than what we're learning from the defense? Do you think that we're being um, vanilla as well, so we can get that advantage the first game. Falcons, what what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, was, I, 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 don't have, I don't have the answers. I think that, um, I mean, if if you judge, I guess if you're judging by practice, then that's a different story. But judging from the games, I don't think we're learning much. Yeah. So for me, I think that the that that um first of all, let's give a shout out to Elijah um Holyfield was playing his butt oh, off yeah, this he was. game. That was, he looked um, good. Playing playing tough, trying to finish runs. Um shout out, man. I really I really appreciated your effort, especially in the in the in the in the, in, in the situation that we were in down so much. He came out there to with his lunch pill trying to make something happen like he wanted to make the team. So yeah. I, I really I really like that. Yeah. Um, the the other thing that that I'm learning is that this team has to rely on the run game. Yeah, has to has to rely on the run game because if you don't get consistent winners outside and you got a guy that's struggling on an eight yard storm route or eight yard lightning or uh, um, route against one on one coverage backside like. And no, and 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 the guys in position to make a play where it's an interception, like those are things that that you have to depend on the run game and your tight ends. And yeah. I just hope this isn't a season where Zach Ertz is, um, you know, the leading receiver, or Dallas Goddard is the leading receiver, because that means that we're going to have a losing season. Um, that's just the truth, and I'm not coming at Zach or Dallas or anything like that. Whenever your tight ends are are, are beating your receivers, you're we're we're having a losing season. So uh, yeah. w what what the offense has made me realize is that we must be dominant up front and run the football so we can get easier passing plays down the field um, that take a little bit longer for these guys to get open, um, and that's what we need. That's that's my only. Thing that I think that 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 that's proven to me thus far. Yeah, yeah. Um, final cuts are next week, Tuesday, the thirty first. Um, there is a lot. Uh, did I give you an opportunity to answer that question, Q? Oh no, no. It, yeah, it. yeah, that's yeah, just laughing yeah, at me. I yeah. was like, man, did I no, no. That quick? I'm just laughing because it's cut day. That's 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 when you start looking around the corners and all that. That's it's not the fun time of the year, man. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. yeah cut day, like. I don't know if I've ever been nervous for a cut day. Oh, I was every <laughs> I was every cut day. I don't know if I've ever been nervous for a cut day. Let's see. In Carolina, no, I wasn't nervous because I because because that, that's when they were let let me play. So I wasn't nervous. Kansas City, maybe no. Kansas City, I wasn't nervous. 
No, I never been nervous for a cut day, <laughs> and that's crazy. I, I was can't... nervous every cut day because you never <laughs> you never know because it ain't just cut day. It could be listen we. We about to trade you day too. <laughs> yeah, that that, that 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 occurs. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I was just weird. I was like, dude, I'm about to make them. I'm about to make them. Every training camp, my whole goal was like, let me show that I'm the that show them that I'm the best. I'm the best player out here that doesn't get the ball. Right? I can't show if I get it, but I'm gonna show you every training camp that nobody can guard me, and it's gonna be a hell of a time for you trying to replace me. Yeah. Like that was my goal, and, and I used to feel like after about a week and a half, two weeks, I'm like, I I'd have made the team already. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the way I feel. Um, but thirty, but 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 cut down day is coming up. That means the season is about to start. Um, there's a lot of people on the chopping block. Um, are we going to get rid of uh, Andre Dillard? Are we going to shop him? Um, Jannard Avery, Travis Fogum. Ortega White side. Uh, what are we gonna do with you know some of the the offensive linemen? Like who's gonna be like there? There are so many different so many different scenarios in my head. Um, Rodney Rodney McLeod's coming back, so are we gonna need you know Epps and other uh, like there? There's a lot of things that that's um, that's that's going on. So um, were you? What do you think? Is going to trend. What, what do you think the most shocking thing that's going to happen on cut day? What do you think the most shocking decision that Ooh, can possibly happen on cut day? That's, mm, that's a tough one. Um, I, with this, you know, with this being a new coach and just just judging from everything that's been transpiring and how the the preseason is going, I don't think there's much that's going to shock me. I yeah. mean. At this point, it, it, I have no idea, and I hate to I hate to not have an answer for you on that because okay. this uh, this has been a weird it's been a weird 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 preseason, and mm -hmm. um, I think everything is is in play right now, honestly. Um, at the receiver position, I mean, you got your four four or five guys on lock. The line position, you got your main guys on lock. I think Dillard is probably on his way out. That won't be a shock to anybody. Um, linebacker position, anything goes like it's it's gonna be. It's, I don't even know, man. The weird. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. To me, I think that the shocks will be outside the team, right? Like a veteran receiver coming in, like a. Um, another cornerback or another safety or somebody like that coming in, um, another linebacker like coming signing? in. Signing? You think signing? Yeah, a signing. I think that – I think you have to make this roster better. So I think this yeah. is inevitable, right? Because based on what this team has shown in the preseason, the depth in the preseason, you're going to exchange some of your players for another player or say, okay, this player is not good enough. So I think the Eagles, more than most teams in the National Football League, is going to reorganize this team um, you know, on a trade, you know, when, when cuts are, are being, you know, finalized and, you know, or the, those few days after um, every, everything is, is taking place. Um, I think that how he's motivated in order to get at least um, adequate backups and, and things of that nature. So I think, and the other shock would be, okay, we do get a veteran receiver and none, Hightower, Fulgham, or Arthur Whiteside make the team. That would be a shock. Which is possible. That is, yeah. Right, because you're saying that this veteran guy is going to help us right now, and these other guys. So I don't, I, I don't think that that's going to occur. I think, I, I think that, I think that based on what 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 they have in front of them, that JJ Arthur Whiteside should be the one. But I think that they like Hightower's potential, and he it may save him. Yeah. So we'll see. I think the receiver receiver room will be the biggest shock. Um, yeah. So cut day is nervous, um, nervous time um, because you see your teammates biting their fingernails. You see, um, you know, people, you know, did they call you? You yeah. know what I mean? Or, or, you know, whatever it is, like, 
um, waiting for knocks on the door. I think you know when you're going to get cut, though. And I know you're saying, I know you're saying, like, I was nervous. But I think you know deep down, y'all. Like, I knew when I was going to get released from the Panthers. Like, I knew it. Like, uh, you know, I wasn't nervous about it. I was like, "Ah, it's about to happen. It's any day right now. (laughs) Right? So, you know, only the delusional people that that, that, that pool never stinks. Only, only you are are you know not understanding of the situation. If you're playing in the fourth quarter of this last preseason game, yeah, the chances that you're getting cut is like ninety percent. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, like don't come to me and be like, hey, man, it was an unfair shake. No, 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 no. My, no. my thing was always listen. If if you gonna cut me. All right, just cut me. Just call me. Tell me, listen, it's not working out. We we gonna cut you. Yeah. Just pack my stuff up in the box in my locker room and send it to me. I give you my address. I even pay for it if I have to. Don't bring me in the in the, in the building. <laughs> have me parade through the hallways. Sit me down. And talk about hey, you know, you can't do this. Blah, 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 blah. These are some things that get you better. Uh, blah, blah blah. See you later. Like no, don't 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 put just me through that. Me. Yeah, just call, call me, me. Let me know. Send me my stuff, man. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I got cut, when I got cut from the Panthers, it was middle of the season. Um, middle to late season. So, um, it was like this. Uh, I told him from the beginning, like I like, dude, I'm not an outside receiver. I can, you know, I'm like a fixer flat. It, it, it'll, I can hold you up for a few, for you know, for for a little bit, right? A little fixer flat to hold you up for a good month, you know. But it ain't a permanent solution, right? It's just not. So I tell him, I said, listen, you know, outside is not something that I'm going to be able to to succeed at consistently. Like I'll have good games, I'll have, but it's not going to be something to see that, you know. Um, succeed that consistently. And so I said, I'm, I'm built for the slot. It's like, no, we want you outside. So we we playing outside. I had a few good games, really good games. But again, like the guys are sitting on me, they're like, and they're not going to throw me the ball down the field. Like, I'll catch it if you throw it up there, throw it a little short. I'm, I'll get it for you, you know, mm-hmm. if you know your personnel. But, you know, most offense coordinators are not trying to hear that, right? Because I'm not 6'6. Mm-hmm. Um, so I knew when I was getting cut. So um, I came as late as I could. <laughs> <laughs> so we supposed to be in the building at like 8.15. I was walking through the door at like 8.13. <laughs> oh, so I was walking through the building. Ron Rivera supposed to be in team meeting like a minute and a half, right? Uh, he right at the door like, Jason, I got to, um, you know, take you to get to get him in. So you take me over to get him in, get him in. It's like, oh man, you know, we got to let you go today. Uh, um, you know, you it wasn't because of anything you said. It wasn't because of, you know, it's just that, you know, you're not. I was like, get him. I told you from the beginning, I'm not an outside receiver, man. I, I told you this. I was like, so like, what do you expect from me? Like, what do you want? I was like, I'm an inside receiver. Y'all refuse to play me inside, and I've shown that I'm better than the guy that you want inside. It's like, you know, so let me, let me, let me go to, you know, Kansas City. Yeah. And uh, so I, I remember that, but I was not confused about it. I knew the moment, the time, <laughs> I knew it all about what was about to happen. <laughs> you knew, see. I knew it. <laughs> and, and you know what? And what's so funny is that Sean McDermott and Ron was looking like they were going to cry because. Like in practice, I was balling. When I had an opportunity, I would ball. And I, I would tell them, like, listen, dude, you always put me, like, put me here. And and Josh Norman's like, dude, why they don't throw you the ball? Why they don't put you inside? It's like they they're retarded, man. <laughs> like, oh, excuse me, I can't say the word. Sorry, you guys. Forgive me for anybody that's dealing with anything. I'm sorry. All right, this is the Q and A show. <laughs> He didn't mean I it that I way. Say, people, people. For, he, for, he, for didn't, me, he didn't mean it that me, way. I didn't mean it that way. Not, so, not at all. For, I think everybody me. understands that. Yeah, right. So you, you political, political correct times, man. You got you get canceled like, yeah. like that. It's 2021, so, man. 2021, yeah. <laughs> crazy. Crazy out here. But, but. We always have a blast with um, these topics. Um, we're going to be giving you guys fresh content. 
Um, we're definitely going to talk more birds, more life stories, more about Jason Avant, Quentin Michael. Um, we want to say thank you to the fans that's making this show a success. Um, and also send your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com, inside the birds at gmail.com. Check out this show and we'll talk to you next week or very, very soon. Um, yes. Have a good one. It's Cute. been great. Say, say, say good night to the people. Good night, everybody. It's been good. <laughs> I'm all thrown off because of the comment that I made. So I'm, oh, I'm all good. Man. All right. Have a good night. <laughs>